racism is not something that we can go slow on. It has been with us forever, and it has been an urgent crisis since it began. And why we keep looking past it is one of the really most troubling issues to me um, as an American. Well, race is, as you know, this nation's original um, sin. We have not really found a way to bring the country together the way that our founding fathers aspired us to do. There is no way that America can be as great as she says she wants to be unless we make sure that what the Founding Fathers promised us is actually realized by everybody irrespective of race, creed, or color. When you actually started to talking about race itself and white people's view of race as opposed to African Americans view of race, mostly white people thought that uh, race in the last 50 years was getting better. Almost every African American we talked to said no, over the last 50 years it has not. The biggest hurdle that we have is that white people who responded to our survey and participated don't really have a full understanding of what institutional racism is in the country. They think it's just an individual act of malice to another person that doesn't look like them. And of course the African American community sees this in a very, very different way. They will clearly say, and you hear this from kids in Louisville, Kentucky, who are high schoolers, they said to me, Mr. Mayor, talent is equally distributed. There's no way to get around that, but opportunity clearly is not. You have schools that are segregated by race. And as a general rule, if you look at all the schools that have high tuitions, <clears throat> most of the people that go there are white kids, not African-American kids. And schools tend to be more segregated than they used to and academic excellence is sometimes related to how much the teachers are paid, what the resources you know, they have are, and they have a better opportunity. Most white people that we talked to didn't like the word white privilege. They felt like it was an assault on the fact that they didn't work hard. On the issue of reparations, most white people that responded to the survey said things like, I wasn't alive during that time, I didn't have a slave, why should I pay money back? When we, again, started talking to them a little bit more about what white privilege might really look like and used other words to describe it, like, can you ever remember getting the benefit of the doubt that maybe one of your friends that didn't look like you had? Like, if you got pulled over by the police and you didn't have your driver's license, did you get arrested or were you given a summons? what happened to your African-American friends, they began to acknowledge that the system actually did treat people differently. It's not hard for people to understand that they didn't learn something the right way. What's hard for them is to acknowledge that we now have to correct it. And so to me, although it was hard to listen to how far we were apart, there always seems to me to be a pathway to common ground if you want to do it. I have been able to witness firsthand the inability of white people to really understand uh, the life that African Americans lead. And of course, as the country continues to get more diverse, we all have to figure out how to live together, not just so that we live in peaceful segregation, so that we actually believe that diversity is a strength, not a weakness, and all of us have the opportunity to realize our God-given potential. Again, not just because it's the right thing to do, which it clearly is, but you cannot win if everybody's not on the field. The call to action is actually very simple, although doing this is really hard, and that's to see every other human being as a human being and judge them based on what's in their soul, not what their color of their skin is. It sounds so simple. It's something that we've been talking about forever, but for some reason we find a really tough time actually doing it because of doing it requires us to think in ways that we haven't been taught. That's a simple call to action, and if you do that in your personal life, and you do that in, in the way that you interact with everybody else in your community, the world is gonna be a better place, but it starts off with whether or not you believe that we are all created equal, and whether all are endowed with inalienable rights of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. If you really believe that, it ought to get us to a much better and a much more different place.